Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my good friend and partner, Ananga Sivir. Our mission is to help you slay your anxiety. In this week's Anxiety Slayer podcast, we're inviting you to cultivate more joy in your life. Everyone experiences stress and anxiety at different times and at varying degrees in their lives. This doesn't mean that your every waking hour has to be anxiety ridden. You can learn to manage anxiety and enjoy a full and happy life. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Welcome back for another week, Ananga. Hey, Shen. It's good to be with you and to talk about how we shouldn't let anxiety suck the joy out of our lives. And before we started recording today, we were just talking about that, how sometimes if you have a pain in your body or if you are stressed about something that's ahead of you or just have a bad day or whatever, how that can take your eye off the greater picture, the bigger picture, to remember that that particular instance, that situation, whatever it is that you're experiencing is not a representation of your life. It's a moment in time. Mm. And that moment can sometimes stretch on for longer than we like, of course, but it's only one piece. It's not the whole thing. And you deserve to be and to enjoy your life, to be happy and to have so much more joy than what we sometimes allow ourselves. Yeah, or, or what we can sometimes reclaim, which is what we're really going to be talking about today, isn't it? But yes. I think sometimes... Uh, in my experience with anxiety, when it's very strong, is it can feel a bit like an oil slick and it just smothers everything. It just leaches into all areas of our mind and our day and our experience and covers all the beautiful things with its energy. But we can reclaim space. We can clean it up so that there's space for the things that bring us joy and contentment. Well, let's start our conversation exploring the different emotions that we all experience. I think that would be a good place to start. Yeah, I was thinking how we tend to use very basic, broad emotions to describe how we feel. And those that research such things say that there are six basic emotions. We might feel sad, angry, anxious or fearful, surprised, disgusted or happy. Those are the six basic emotions. But Our emotions can be mixed and so much more complex and so much more subtle than that. And they can coexist. And I think it's really helpful just not to allow that that whitewash where we say I'm angry and that's that or I'm sad and it's it's everything or I feel fearful and it's taken over everything. In the moment, those emotions really can take over everything. But we sit with them and look for their message or what's underneath them, what's around them. We can reclaim a bit of space. We absolutely can. And it's making me think of uh, how helpful it is for somebody that loves you to remind you of how absurd, peculiar, funny, hilarious a situation might be, even when you are, let's take anger for, for example. Sometimes if I'm, really angry about something and just, you know, spouting off about whatever is driving me bananas, my husband will just laugh at me. (laughs) Not in a way that's um, judgmental or harmful, but in a way to help me see just how funny it is that I'm choosing to be that agitated about whatever it might be. Mm. Because usually it's nothing dire. It's uh, somebody cut cut you off in traffic or treated you poorly or somebody messed something up or a package arrived and it was broken or you know, the list continues, right? Mm-hmm. And, to, and to laugh at that. And, and the reason why I bring that up is because you can be anxious and joyful at the same time. And knowing this and allowing space for both can help stop anxiety sucking the joy out of our lives. So even when we're angry, Somebody who knows and loves us enough can get us laughing about it. 
And even when we're worried, we can be grateful. And even when we're sad, we can absolutely be full of love. Yeah. I think it's really helpful to explore these possibilities because when anxiety is running high, it can make us quite insular and disassociated. We can feel withdrawn. And should somebody bring us a cup of tea or give us a hug or extend some kindness, we can miss it. Mm -hmm. And we we need those things. So I always try and have a policy of if I'm going through a rough time and somebody should give me a hug, I'll, I'll let it just take a deep breath and, and be there for it and, and reciprocate with it and, and just know that that love and that support's there for me. Sometimes we can be almost beside ourselves. We're not at home. We're not in our body properly and we're not receiving the nourishment and the kindness that might be coming our way. So I also like to journal those things. You know, I might say today I was really worried about this or I was struggling with that, but I spoke to whoever and really appreciate their support and the conversation we had. And I'm so grateful for our relationship. And those are really the moments of silver in the cloud, the silver lining. And we can so easily miss them when we're anxious because of that disconnect that can come with anxiety. Yeah, because you just want to cocoon, you just want to hide away. Mm -hmm. And you might be so in your own head that you're missing cues and missing these, these sweet acts from, from other people. Let's talk a bit about the, the subtleties of emotion to look for as we're trying to cultivate more joy and to get a little bit closer to what's going on in, in our own situation. I think it really helps when we feel anxious to question ourselves and look for more specific detail. We can say, I'm, I'm anxious, or we can just say, well, you have anxiety and it's a condition and, and that's that, and it feels very set in stone. But again, if we can look under it and around it, we might find out a bit more information that helps us find ways to respond and support ourselves. So is it just anxiety? Are we triggered? Has something come along that reminds us of something else and it's knocked us off our feet? Um, are we overwhelmed? Are we overtired? Are we being a little hard on ourselves? Do we feel disappointed in ourselves that we're not coping as well as we think we should? It's really helpful to look at those things and, and if you can, take five minutes to jot them down. And I think these things really help us see patterns and they help us see where there's room for seeking support or making changes in our dialogue, in the way we talk to ourselves. And they provide really good insights. To use with EFT tapping. It gives us more specific personal information. And when we can bring that to our tapping sessions, we're going to find the tapping even more effective for calming anxiety. One of the things that I like to do is create tapping scripts that even if I'm not going to do a full tapping session, uh, I will catch myself saying, oh, even though I'm really frustrated right now, and can't seem to figure this out on my own, I love and accept myself. Mm -hmm. Or even though this person that I just dealt with wasn't very kind to me, it's not a reflection of who I am, and I love and accept myself. And, and I may or may not tap, but just getting those words out in that space and then, and then telling myself that, it, it lightens things up. And I'm, I'm still breathing, I'm still in that space, and I may or may not be tapping. That's interesting. Well, and it's something that I learned from one of my uh, healer friends years ago who is a shiatsu practitioner who would do some EFT while working on your body, but there was no tapping involved. So he was moving energy, and at the same time, I was speaking or you know, using those phrases or scripts or whatever. Yeah, and of course, you know, the foundation of tapping is uh, using the, the acupoints, points, the, the energy points on the body, and neuralistic programming, which is all about our languaging, how we talk to ourselves, what wording we're using to describe anything in our lives. It's quite amazing when you stop and look at the words you're using and the energy they carry. So, yeah, I can see how that could be really mm -hmm. a good experience. 
Yeah. And, and you know, and that makes me think it probably was more NLP um, than EFT. <laughs> Is somebody listening to us for the first time? What in the world are they talking about? Too many letters. <laughs> but yeah, so to put it simply, they're using languaging and encouraging you to reflect on your languaging while they're working on your body. So it's it's the same principle mm-hmm. as EFT tapping, using the words and working with the energy system of the body, tapping the points. It's exactly the same principle. And it's always good to look at our languaging. I have a couple of friends at the moment who have, just discovered uh, Julia Cameron's The Artist Way. Yeah. So they're starting the morning pages. Oh, morning pages are so divine. Uh huh. It's interesting. To, they're a couple of weeks in and they're like, oh, this morning was hard going and oh, today was really good. And, you know, I'm starting to see some patterns. But of course, her process is that you write it all out and don't look at it for a few weeks. And um, she makes the point that, you know, nobody can tolerate themselves whining about something for that long. You know, eventually you're going to want to change. So it's really helpful when we're looking at anxiety and our relationship with anxiety and our relationship to ourself. When we're living with anxiety, what words are we using? Sometimes it can be quite shocking how harsh we're being with ourselves or our perception of ourselves. So just good to look, write it down have a look, see if there's areas where we can soften up, see if we're making generalizations that are making things feel even more difficult than they might otherwise be if we got a bit more specific and a bit kinder. Mm-hmm. And if we're open to working with the coexistence of anxiety and joy, anxiety and happiness, you found a wonderful quote from Dr. David Frowley that I'd love for you to share. Yeah, this came up just this morning in a reading group I'm participating in when we're reading through one of my favorite books, David Frawley's Ayurveda and the Mind. So going through that again, and his quote is, we should no longer seek to overcome our pain, but to expand our joy. And of course, if we expand our joy enough, it will help us overcome our pain. So rather than looking at the struggle of overcoming what we're suffering with to look, how can we develop our joy? In other writings, he says, how can we develop our joy, develop our happiness? And Ayurveda gives teachings on how to do that and how to lift the mind into a a happier state. So yeah, I thought that was a very timely quote that coming up this morning. Mm -hmm. And of course, active Gratitude and having a gratitude practice helps so much with the coexistence of anxiety and joy. And you can't be in judgment of yourself or others and in gratitude at the same time. Mm. You simply can't. So if you're practicing gratitude, you're staying out of judgment and that harsh self judgment. Make it a practice to notice what you're grateful for. And from the smallest creature comfort to the sweetest wonders of creation, just pay attention. This morning, I had so much gratitude that my warm, woolly, fuzzy, happy socks were clean, (laughs) that I I could put them on my feet. It was really cold. And they're my favorite. And to just put those on, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but they're so comfortable comfortable and cozy and I was so grateful to be able to put them on. Yeah, it sounds good to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those are real happy comforts. Uh, this morning I was grateful for a warm shower. I'm experiencing quite a bit of muscle pain at the moment and a good hot shower helps. So I was just really grateful for plentiful hot, clean water and a bit of relief that that brings. Yesterday my daughter and I went out for a a walk and I saw a rhododendron bush, huge rhododendron bush um, in a gardens that I love to visit near our home. And it just had a little bud coming. I was like, oh, the buds are coming. So then I was looking for others and I found a few few other buds and I was calling her, look, look. (laughs) I'm so excited. (laughs) They're getting their buds. And then I remembered in um, May last year, there's a walk in these gardens. It's a, a rhododendron walk, and they're huge. 
huge, huge, and just full of color. And I was thinking, oh, we'll be able to do that again before too long. We can do that walk and go with some friends and family and we can take a picnic. And it just made me feel really happy. And to be honest, I wasn't having a great day. I had some stuff going on that was really weighing on my mind. But that little bud reminded me that spring's coming. It helped me. Yeah. Yeah. I had a a similar situation yesterday. We had sunshine for the first time in several days. And so I was scurrying around the house, getting all of my plants in front of the windows and having conversations with my plant friends and giving them more sun and tending to them and a little bit of fingers in the dirt and just bringing them, moving them about to, to bring that sun in. And, and Mulan was in the window sunning herself. And I made sure that I got outside as well, but just to be in gratitude for the warmth of the sun and to be sweet with these house plants that mm-hmm. I love so much. And again, these are such small things, but they make such a big difference in your overall well-being. Yeah, they're small, but they're significant. And they do. They make, a, they make a difference. If we can make the room to let them in and gather them up. Yeah, absolutely. And when you gather them up, make a list. Write stuff down. A, a mental note is fine, but what if you were to just take a moment and jot down what you're grateful for right now. Mm. I bet you, you would find more items on your list than you realize if you let yourself leave that loop of anxiety that your mind can often say, no, you're going to stay right here. We're just going to loop around the stress. But you can kind of break that wide open if you come back to the the smallest buds that you see in nature and the sunshine coming through the window and the warm and cozy socks, right? Definitely. We have to try and ignore the mind. You know, it's going to rattle on and its inclination is to not be our friend and bring up all sorts of horrible thoughts and, and looping concerns. So if we can put it aside and What's the word? Defy it. It's like, no, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going to look for joy. You carry on. You rattle on, but I'm going to find, find some joy. And I think it's really, really helpful to log it in a journal. I was um, looking through my journal the other day, and there was a spell of intense stress a few years ago when I had to move home under very difficult circumstances. And it was a very challenging time for me. And right there was all the kindness I received. There was a photograph of a huge bunch of tulips that you sent me when we moved mm. in. And it's the biggest bunch of tulips I've ever seen. So we had, <laughs> we had tulips everywhere in the house, in jam jars, in vases, everywhere. And it was really, really uplifting. And it brought me to tears, the kindness. Um, and a friend organized a grocery shop that was just delivered to our door and cards came and phone calls came and it's easy to look back at those times and think, oh, that was such a hard time and I was really suffering. But no, what's there is the love and kindness we receive in those difficult times. So I really like to have them written down. I like to keep pictures. I like to remember the treasure that's there and the gold in good friends that are there in these difficult times. And that is a beautiful way to defy your mind. Yeah. Because as you found another really excellent quote from C. Scott Ryan, who is the author of Mind and the Basis of Psychology in Ayurveda. And he says, mind is a flow of thought. If you think fear, then mind becomes fear. If you think anger, then mind becomes anger. If you think happy, then mind becomes happy. And again, easier said than done. And sometimes we have to drag ourselves kicking and screaming to find the happy, or we just don't want to. The mind's going to object. But why turn down the opportunity for some moments of happiness? Why not try? Why don't we try and find it and just defy our mind? Because the mind gets very hooked. The mind gets very stuck. I remember when I was first um, 
studying positive psychology. Some, many years ago, my daughter was a baby and I took myself on this NLP training. And they gave the example of a story from Richard Bandler, who's the, the main teacher, developer of NLP. And he told the story of a woman at a party that was there all evening laughing and joking and eating and she, she was seen to be having a really good evening. And then somebody bumped into her and spilled a glass of wine on her. And she said, that's ruined everything. It's ruined everything. And somebody said to her, really? It's going to go back in time. I saw you laughing. I saw you hugging people. I saw you having a good time. You, you're going to let that one spill. It's unfortunate and it's going to need taking care of, but you're going to let that go back and erase the joy you were experiencing before. And that really struck me because I've seen my mind do that. Me too. And I've seen my mind let something leach into the day. And that stopped it. That happened to me this morning with the internet issues and knowing that we had our session coming up and trying to, to work doing the troubleshooting. And, and I almost let it spill into our time together and take away the sweet morning I had with my husband. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait a minute, this, you know what? This is nothing. It, this is an inconvenience. This is a first world problem. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, get over yeah. it. And, and not in an unkind way, but sometimes in that snap of a honest, <laughs> direct, pitta conversation where it's like, okay, snap out of it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to let this be your day. Because the mind will try and it has a negative, generalistic tendency. Right. I remember when my daughter was little, she had this game and it was all made of magnets. There were magnetic balls and there were magnetic sticks. And the idea of the game was that you built different structures with them. You could make all kinds of shapes and houses and all kinds of stuff. But she, <laughs> she still liked it. But as a kid, she always had this thing where she would use something for completely not the purpose that was intended, much to my entertainment. So her favorite game with all these magnets and balls was to get the lot and throw them on the floor and see how many stuck together. And sometimes they'd kind of wiggle their way over over a little time. <laughs> they'd like start <laughs> moving in and she thought that was hilarious. Um, and the game was called Geomag, if I remember rightly. And from that, I took this understanding of our minds that our minds can be like geomag you have something some thing on the floor that's magnetic and then our mind will stick everything to it in a big old clump and it will take all the negative something happened and it's like and this and this and this wasn't right and this has really annoyed me and do you know what else has really disturbed me and we just go on a one with it just like that game all those bits stuck and the mind has this really negative propensity to do that, to lump everything into a big old generalization. Right. And then we're miserable. Yeah, and, and that is where it comes back to it's sucking the joy out of your life. Absolutely. And we can stop that. Yeah. I had a conversation many years ago with Leonie Dawson, who is a magical soul in, in herself, and we were talking about how to enjoy a full and magical life when you struggle with anxiety. And some of the content, some of the information that she brought forward was so perfect. It was starting with celebrating our sensitive nature mm. because everyone listening to Anxiety Slayer and Ananga and I included are very highly sensitive beings. And there is something to celebrate there. We are kind. We are wonderful people. And we feel things in such a big way. We do. We have these gorgeous hearts. And there's so much to celebrate in the way that we show up for ourselves and others. And we forget that sometimes. Yeah, it's easy to forget. And often we're told we're too sensitive. Yeah. Why are you so sensitive? If I had a dollar for every time I was asked that question, I would be a billionaire. Yeah. So many times I've heard it too. 
But who wants to be in relationship with somebody that's insensitive? Exactly. No, thank you. Yeah, it's, it is something to celebrate. We feel it all deeply, and that can be very raw and very vulnerable. So we need support, but it's not a flaw. No. It's actually how we should be. The human being is a sensitive soul by nature. And when we're feeling out of sorts and need some extra support, you've heard us talk about all kinds of self-care rituals that you can do for yourself, from breathing exercises to guided relaxations, EFT tapping, aromatherapy, going for a walk, getting a massage, doing some Qigong, all of these things, all of these self-care rituals help. You bring more joy in, and it's not a difficult thing to just choose one. Just pick one, roll the dice, throw the magnets, <laughs> choose one, and start there. I had some lavender this morning close by when I was feeling agitated, and, and then I also have this little amber box that you sent me a long time ago, Nanga, and I was just sniffing, you know, like... Oh, yeah, that smells so good. <laughs> and, and again, was able to bring a little bit of humor into it. Yes. <laughs> when I realized how silly, like I, oh, there's the lavender. I think I shall sniff it. <laughs> <laughs> but I put some on my wrists and I put a little bit on my chest and I took some deep breaths and I just remembered that this is just not important at all, that this all works itself out. It always has, it always will. We all deal with different issues that are a real pain in the butt. However, we don't need to let them be the, the main exclamation point of your day. You get to choose otherwise. Yeah, and we need those pauses to make that choice. Mm -hmm. You just reminded me of something a friend sent me on Instagram this morning. <laughs> it's a picture of a woman laid on the floor, covered in like random sprigs of lavender all over, and she looks completely wide-eyed and stressed out. And it just says at the top, have you tried lavender? <laughs> 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 She's got these bunches thrown all over her. <laughs> <laughs> really made me laugh. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you for this conversation today, Ananga. It was a lot of fun, and I'm grateful for that. And to everyone listening, and thank you for continuing to listen to Anxiety Slayer. We are going to continue this month sharing different ways that we can focus on being more joyful and inviting more joy and happiness into our lives, even when we struggle with anxiety. Did you know that you can support Anxiety Slayer on Patreon for as little as $5 each month and get loads of Anxiety Slayer extras? Learn more at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer.